Hey guys, welcome to 2020 and we are back with a Friday video. So this is a dumpster dive. A local business has been throwing away computers and I pulled out a main board. It came with a CPU and an Intel stock cooler as well as six RAM modules. And yeah, in this video we will have a look what do we have here and how does it perform with modern games. So let's have a look at what we have here. We've got an Intel i5. This is an i5-2400 and comes with the Intel boxed cooler. It was quite dusty. I did not remove the thermal paste while benchmarking, so the temperatures are a little bit on the high side. I did clean it up afterwards. So a few things about the processor. It's an i5-2400. So this is a quad-core processor, no hyper-threading. It is from the Sandy Bridge generation. And with four cores, some of the modern games might start to struggle a little bit. And that's what we will find out soon in this video. And here we have the main board. This one is from Intel. It's a Intel desktop board DQ67SW for socket 1155. It's got everything we need. PCI Express 16, 1X and 4X. There's a PCI slot. We have four RAM slots so we can max out uh, the memory with four modules. Now, usually I don't get very political and make um, yeah recommendations. Intel in general, I was always happily recommending their products but they have stopped supporting legacy products. They actually pulled old drivers and BIOS files. And to me, this is just, uh, yeah, it's heartbreaking. Uh, I don't understand why large companies uh, do that. They might feel like they're saving a bit of uh, money with storage and maybe administration, but they don't realize how much credibility and how much support they're losing from the community by pulling things like that. So yeah, going forward, Go with ASRock, MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte instead. At least they're still supporting their products. And uh, having a look at the AMD website, the old downloads for old Rage video cards are still up there. So that's also a recommendation of mine. For RAM, we have six modules of DDR3 memory. These have a capacity of two gigabytes each. So we're using four of them for a total capacity of eight gigabytes of RAM, which is not ideal, but it's good enough and we are using a video card with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, so we didn't run into any issues. A while ago I purchased a Radeon RX 5700, so we have something more substantial to avoid any bottlenecks going on at 1080p. It's got 8 gigabytes of VRAM and this is what we're going to use to test all the games. And for storage we're using a 2 terabyte SSD from Crucial. For power we're using the Thermaltake 750 watt power supply. And power consumption of this system is very good. Idle, sitting on the desktop, 38 watts. Running Cinebench R20, we're seeing 109 watts. And running Firestrike, the uh, FutureMark benchmark, I saw a peak power reading of 256 watts. So let's have a look at some benchmarks. In Cinebench R15, we're getting 432. In R20, we're getting 791. I also ran the CPU Z benchmark. 1,281 for four cores and 324 for single core performance. And I also ran Firestrike, we're getting a total score of 12,759 with a physics score of 5,673 and a graphics score of 23,798. And now let's have a look at some games. We start with some highly optimized games like Doom, for example. So this uses the Vulkan API, which performs excellent on lower powered processors, as long as you have a capable video card. We are using high details, and look at that, it cruises along at well over 100 FPS. Strange Brigade is another game using the Vulkan API, also high details, 1080p, and we're getting well over 200 FPS. So this is a game that uh, is really well optimized, looks good and performs good. Wolfenstein 2, high details, 1080p, around 200 FPS. Another game that uses the Vulkan API. So we can see a trend here. If more games would use that API, then yeah, you wouldn't have to upgrade your machine that often. Over the holidays, I bought a few games that weren't special. We have Battlefield 5. High details, runs at 1080p, and yeah, it does run around 60 FPS, but sometimes it does drop below, 
and there are definitely some stutters going on and some issues with the frame times. So it is playable, but if you're a competitive multiplayer, uh, it's probably not the best experience, but it is playable and it does run all right. I also purchased Far Cry New Dawn. We're running here with high details and we can see that the CPU load is extremely high. So all four cores are being utilized pretty much to its limits and the performance, it is below 60 FPS, sometimes dipping into the 30s as well. And I still have Far Cry 5 and that game performs similar below 60 FPS. So for Ubisoft games and in general for open world games, the i5-2400 is not really cutting it anymore. And yeah, but let's move on to another game. We've got Dirt Rally 2, high details, over 100 FPS. So this is a game that performs really well if you're into racing games. Next up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, high details, and we're getting over 60 FPS. But look at the CPU load, it's very high and in certain scenes it will dip into the 30s. So this is a game that can take advantage of many cores and the i5-2400 unfortunately only has four cores and, and no extra threads. So this is a game in, in, in certain scenes it will definitely struggle. Here we're running the War Thunder benchmark with maximum quality and we're getting a result of 117 FPS average and 100 FPS minimum. So War Thunder is a game that should run well on this machine. Apex Legends, high details, around the 60 FPS, maybe a little bit higher, but look at the CPU load, it's very high and the frame times are also not that good. So not the best experience, but it does run okay. And we've got another game, Subnautica with high details, runs around 60 fps sometimes a little bit higher um, that's just a game that recently popped up on the microsoft xbox pc pass and i believe that's it no there's one more game does it run crisis unfortunately not really depending on what's going on you will see fps as low as 30 fps and that's not very good so here the processor just doesn't have enough performance to run crisis well with very high details. So guys, what is the verdict? Not too bad actually, and we have to consider that this was free. I pulled it out of the bin, and these are the sort of components that companies are throwing away now. So if you keep your eyes open, uh, you might be able to get such a machine for free or very little money. Now, a couple of years ago, the i5-2400 was, yeah, a good recommendation for budget gaming, but as we have seen in this video, especially if you're into open world games, performance will start to become an issue. There are no extra threads, so all you have is four cores, and a lot of the games will max them out, and then you will get some frame time issues and stuttering and pauses and so on. So, yeah. Um, if you are looking at buying these parts, you might be better off with the 2011, LGA 2011 platform. We've done a lot of videos on that and pick up an Ivy Bridge 6 or 8 core processor instead. They will be more future proof. The next generation of consoles will have 8 cores. So that is definitely coming very soon. And of course, first gen Ryzen, which is also something we keep looking at on this channel. But considering this is free, Performance is not too bad, and if you stick with somewhat older games, you know those games you can pick up on a Steam sale or GOG sale for very little money. Um, maybe you already have a nice uh, back catalog of older games like I do. Or, um, for example, the Epic Launcher, a free game every week, which is also fantastic. I already have like 20 or 30 games just through that, and these are all older games that run really well on a machine like this. But yeah, I believe I do believe that the uh, days of recommending a quad-core processor without hyper-threading are over, uh, for even for budget gaming. Uh, if this is all you have access to, then fair enough. But if you have a bit of money and you have a budget that you can stretch a little bit, um, a 6 or 8-core processor doesn't cost that much if you look at old Xeon processors. So um, yeah, definitely interesting. I was kind of expecting this to perform a little bit better than it did, but it is what it is. And 
As always, guys, leave your comments and thoughts down below in the uh, comment section. Always eager to hear from you. Let me know what you think. If you found this video interesting, do give it a like, share it with your friends, and yeah, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And let me know what else you want to see this year. I'll do my best to make it happen. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.